The odds makers have no choice but to inflate the line in this UConn-Alabama game. Is it too high? Is there value with Bama now? Or does UConn continue to roll? I'm going to give you an alternate way to play this game. And I think the best way to make some money between UConn and Alabama on Saturday night in the Final Four. That information coming up free for you here in this video in just a moment. Hi, this is Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Back here on Wager Talk TV. And I'm breaking down the second Final Four matchup on Saturday night. Slated to tip off around 8.49 Eastern on TBS following, of course, the NC State-Purdue game. And by the way, I did a breakdown in depth of that Purdue-NC State game right here on Wager Talk TV as well. So be sure you hit subscribe and you click the bell so you get instant alerts when these videos go live throughout the week for both college and pro basketball. And don't forget Major League Baseball here as well on Wager Talk TV. All right, go watch that Purdue-NC State breakdown after this video. But while we're here, let's talk Alabama and UConn. And as I said, the odds makers are forced to inflate this line for several reasons. First of all, UConn has been dominant. It's all been very public. These are all highly watched games, Sweet 16, Elite 8. And everybody now knows it's national media material that UConn has won for the first time ever, 10 straight tournament games, all by 13 points or more. No team has ever done that in the history of the tournament. And UConn's done it the last two seasons combined. Now they're 10 and 0 straight up since winning the last national title last year. And every win has been by 13 points or more. Oddsmakers had to inflate this line a little bit. They opened it around 10, 10 and a half. It quickly went up to 11, 11 and a half. And now as I do this video early week, it's 12 across the board at the Wager Talk Live odd screen, inching so close to that 13, which has been the average, the, mar the minimum margin of victory the last two years. Now, of course, several of those games were against teams a lot weaker than Alabama. And Alabama is still one of the most dangerous offensive teams in the country. But Bama's real weakness this year has been on the defensive side. In fact, if you look at the current Ken Palm efficiency rankings this week, Alabama's 12th overall, third offense, but 104 on defense. And that's because they play fast. They're the ninth fastest team in the country out of 362. And they like to play that way regardless of how their opponent plays. Now, Connecticut is a very slow half-court team, 315th tempo. And normally, the better, slower team can slow down and dictate tempo. But I'm not sure that's going to be the case in this game. And I do think UConn will get their points. In fact, if you're going to play this, I think the best way to attack it is with a team total and I would recommend UConn over 86.5 total points in this game. Once again, the Connecticut team total over 86.5 total points. I'm going to give you a few reasons why. First of all, the over-under on this game opened 161.5. And on Tuesday, it dropped down to 160.5, even 160 at some of the sharp books. So we did see a little bit of early sharp money this week coming in the under. It makes sense because, once again, UConn is favored. And they're the slower half-court team with an excellent defense. And also, don't forget, this is in State Farm Arena. It's the home of the Arizona Cardinals. It's an NFL stadium. Sight lines could be a problem. And Alabama relies heavily on the three-point shot. So I think that's another reason we've seen money come in on UConn and we've seen money come in on the under. Problem with UConn is the line is inflated. If you look at efficiency metrics this year, uh, Connecticut should be anywhere from about a 9 to 10-point favorite. Uh, that's pretty much where this line opened. But once again, the betting market has pushed it higher to 12 because UConn has been so dominant. The other concern I have with the side in this game with UConn is that Alabama is going to live and die by the three. And if the three-pointers are falling, they could keep this game close. We saw St. John's take a very similar game plan approach in the Big East tournament. Patino came out and said, basically, we got to just let it go from three and hope for the best. And that was the closest game UConn has had over the past month. That was a non-covering win by just five points back on March 15th. Second game for them in the Big East tournament of the semifinals before they beat Marquette in the finals that Saturday. A 95-90 high-scoring win. UConn obviously got over their team total there. And the two teams combined for 21 threes. And keep in mind, Connecticut does not take a lot of three-pointers. And they were 11 for 22 in that game from three-point range. In the tournament so far, they were just three for 22 against Northwestern, still put up 75 points. They were just three for 17 in that game against Illinois and still put up 77. So if they hit anywhere near the normal from three in this game, which I think they will have more chances uh, they'll get up and over. And also, Connecticut's get bread and butter is obviously down low. Big seven foot two guy in the center there. Good guard play, good swing forwards. They're just real, a well balanced team. And Alabama is a really weak defensive team. Illinois was a weak defensive team. Alabama is even weaker, and Alabama plays even faster. So I do think Connecticut's going to get some points in this one. And Alabama is okay with that. Bama's going to try to outscore Connecticut. I don't think it works well. Connecticut advances to the national title game. Whether they win by more than 12 is a little dicey because this line is inflated, but I do think they get their team total either way. I like Connecticut over 86 and a half total points. I think that's a good, unique way to attack this game on Saturday night. Uh, once again, Connecticut also good free throw shooting team and Alabama 
310th worst out of 362 as far as percentage of times they allowed their opponents to get points from the free throw line. So Bama's given up a lot of points from the free throw line, and their weakness also is two-point defense, and that's Connecticut's strength on offense. And once again, I think Alabama's going to be running and gunning and forcing the tempo here. And oh, by the way, Connecticut has played some other fast-paced teams this year. Let's just look at the Big East opponents that play fast. Xavier, back the first game of the Big East tournament, Connecticut put up 87. They won easily by 27. They had two more games after that, so they did call off the dogs. They still got to 87. That won't be the case here. They'll play hard throughout. When they played Xavier back on January 28th in the regular season, they put up 99 points at home in that game, and they put up 80 in the road game a few weeks before that. Uh, Marquette also plays up-tempo. Connecticut got to 81 against them in that home win. Also uh, 74 and 73 in the other games. But again, once again, Marquette was a much better defensive team, though, than either Illinois or Alabama, and they didn't play quite as fast as either. Um, some other fast-paced teams they played uh, this season, Gonzaga, they got 76 against them um, back in on a neutral court back in mid-December. Um, but the point is, Alabama's as fast, if not faster, than anybody Connecticut's faced this year, and it's going to lead to some easy two-point baskets, especially since Bama's two-point defense has been very weak this season. In fact, efficiency-wise, uh, Alabama's two-point defense ranks um, percent, I'm sorry, field goal percentage-wise from two-point range, they're only 190th in the country. UConn is second. So, you know, the game under does make sense. That's where we've seen the sharp money. I'm just concerned Alabama might hit some rogue threes and push this over. I just think the safer play is letting UConn's team total get up and over. I do think they win this game. It is an inflated number, but I'm not looking to get in front of the best team in college football that's really on a monumental run. Take a look at Connecticut over 86.5 total team points on Saturday night. Hey, comment below. I read all the comments. I reply back. What are your thoughts on this game? What do you think is the best way to attack it? Do you like the team total idea? Do you like a side or total full game? Comment below. And if you have some time, include some analysis as well so we can win and learn and earn together here on Wager Talk TV. If you're not part of the family, click subscribe to be part of the Wager Talk TV family for free. Click subscribe and hit the bell as well so you get instant alerts when my free play videos go up through the week for NBA, college basketball, Major League Baseball. And don't forget, I will be doing a Fade the Public college tournament video this Friday. I'll let you know the most public data for the sides and totals in both games also in advance. This is an advanced look early in the week. I'll have a more up-to-date look for you as well in that Fade the Public video on Friday. So hit the bell and click subscribe. Thumbs up, like as well. And if you want my official best bets for the Final Four, if you want a baseball daily, NBA daily, check out my page along with bonus free plays every day at wagertalk.com. Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. And while you're there, you really should consider the NBA. I know we're talking college hoops, but there's only three tournament games remaining this season. There's a several hundred NBA games remaining for a couple more months. And nobody in the history of wagertalk.com has won more with NBA sides than I have in the history of the website. And I'm number one again this season. 55 and 35, 61% at the time of doing this video on Tuesday, and up over 66 units of profit already in the NBA. Baseball off to a great start also. In fact, my first six baseball best bets and free plays have gone 5-1 and one this season. The only loss, a 6-4 blown lead in the ninth inning. Otherwise, we'd be 6-0. So I'm seeing baseball really well. Check out the daily baseball best bets, the bonus free plays, and also the NBA best bets and free plays on my page, stevemerrillwagertalk.com. And while you're there, Take advantage of a very special promo code for the rest of the NBA season. Just $219. That's just over $2.5 a day for every NBA best bet the rest of the way through the playoffs and the finals in June. It's normally it was $280 this week. Get it down to $219 with promo code NBA219. That's NBA219. Once again, NBA219. Use it on the full season NBA package. You get the rest of the year for just $219. My number one ranked NBA basketball, Steve Merrill, wagertalk.com. Get there quicker with shortcut wt.buzz slash sm. Follow me on Twitter and X as well at Steve Merrill, two R's, one L, at Steve Merrill on Twitter and X. Also post free plays throughout the week on Instagram. Be sure to follow me on IG. And don't forget, comment below. I read all the comments here on YouTube. I reply back. Who do you like in the Final Four? Check out my Purdue NC State full game breakdown on this channel as well. And don't forget to stay tuned here to Wager Talk TV for more great basketball and baseball info coming up next.